I'm Anderson Jeremiah, uh, and I'm an associate professor in uh, politics, philosophy, and religion at the University of Lancaster in the northwest of um, England. And I'm delighted to be sharing this little um, introduction to what it means to be an Anglican and also what it means to talk about discipleship. Anglican identity. Um, so Anglicanism is one of the, as Paul Avis, one of the historians of the church, uh, argues is one of the humanly, historically conditioned institutional forms taken by that gracious saving action of God through the ministry of the word, sacrament and pastoral care. And our human response to in faith and discipleship. So Anglican identity is a, is a very nebulous concept. It means different things to different people. However, there are converging areas uh, for many of these identities. It is complex and contested. For instance, I am based in Church of England. Although I was brought up in Church of South India in, uh, in, in the South Asian context. So Church of England and the Anglican Church, they are not identical. Church of England was a, was a, a vision of Christian nation upheld by a Christian monarch, and that's how it began. However, Anglican Communion, as the worldwide family of legally autonomous churches, or self-governing but spiritually and pastorally interdependent. And crucially, this loosely held uh, communion of churches, or in communion, with the Archbishop of Canterbury. But the key root of, of Anglican identity stems from the threefold appeal to scripture, reason, and tradition. The central feature of Anglicanism is that it is territorial and contextual, but inclusive in nature. So tradition but context-based and crucially incarnational in nature. And this also gives focus to indigeneity or local culture and context. So faith rooted in local culture and practice and listening to the gospel in local context that reverberates and resonates with the local. And we saw many of these key features expressed in the little uh, uh, videos that you got to see in this section, whether it is in the context of uh, Philippines, whether it is in the context of South Africa, or in Australia, or in Canada, the emphasis on locality becomes very important for Anglican identity. So it's not simply an expansion of Church of England across the globe, but rather the faith and tradition and scripture being lived and expressed in diverse contexts across the globe. So pluralism of Anglican identity is at the heart of the Anglican communion. But at the same time, this pluralism is very much underpinned by an approach of inclusiveness which is, which is very intrinsic to Anglicanism. And this is where the idea of communion uh, that stems from a strong sense of community, uh, a communion that is tied up with the idea of community. So Anglican identity uh, is very often explained as a fellowship. And also very interestingly coming uh, from my own background, coming from Church of South India, it is also uh, Anglican identity as ecumenical, 
and there is there is a very strong sense of icos that we all belong to this broad community of god called to reflect the gospel in our local context and here we see a sense of belonging um, as it has been very beautifully uh, expressed uh, in these videos um, you know created by words belonging you know the liturgy becomes a very strong sense uh, mechanism through which we understand belonging uh, and also the faith we share however different they are in their manifestations and beautifully as it has been highlighted liturgy that embraces locality and richness based on diversity so in 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 for all sense uh, and purposes uh, anglican communion becomes a unifying space and our anglican identity draws from that sense of uh, uh, of belonging uh, the liturgy language not only to speak about god but to share people's diverse experience and it also facilitates and fosters a friendship across continents and so the idea of dialogue in friendship becomes very central and as as one of uh, one of the uh, wonderful people reflected uh, anglican communion uh, as stresses on diversity and not on uniformity so we we are all not kind of um, uh, of the same shape and uh, sound and color and texture there is we are different and there is no effort whatsoever to make all of us across the anglican communion to look the same and sound the same and feel the same and there are three broad self understandings that is also very crucial for us to understand um, there is a strand of evangelical and or reformed uh, uh, church personship and there is the anglo catholic or anglican catholic and or traditionalist and also there is very strong strand of the liberal and or a broad church tradition so anglican identity uh, is very much is birthed in this context there's one a little information that is very important to keep all this framing in uh, in perspective is that anglican identity is tied to the very strongly to the british empire and the colonial process um so majority of the anglican churches across the globe uh, about 44 provinces and about 80 million people is the fact that uh, it, 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 the primary uh, mechanism through which um, uh, these churches began taking shape in those places is through the uh, uh, colonial process. Of course, uh, we need to understand the missionary expansion, but also the close links between the colonial process and the missionary expansion is very important so one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that what, what does it mean to have a post-colonial anglican identity what does that mean to us it emphasizes the equal partnership so we are not simply being dictated from uh, canterbury uh, the rest of the world or the rest of the communion is not being told what to do but rather we are interdependent and we are equal partners and in fellowship between one another but with a very clear understanding of the bonds of affection between different um, uh, many different uh, uh, provinces and also moving beyond kind of anglocentrism that it's not all about what happens in england but we need to decenter give space create safe space for all the voices to emerge so the guru is seen as a source of knowledge and it is passed from guru to sishya sishya meaning disciple uh, the most important thing is that um, through spiritual intellectual and emotional bond between the guru and the sishya the expansion of knowledge and life 
gets uh, um, understood. So the Sishya leaves behind his social life and devotes um, his or her entire attention to the Guru. And the Guru in turn guides his Sishya on their path to knowledge. So within the concept of discipleship, it is, it is this idea that the connection between the master and the disciple is very, very important to keep in mind. Firstly, a disciple is primarily defined by his or her relationship to the teacher or the guru or the master. In the context of Anglican discipleship, if we have to frame it, when Jesus asked, who do people say that I am? Uh, and they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. So he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Messiah. So the knowledge and personal understanding of Jesus, the teacher, our master, is very, very important. And secondly, uh, the disciple becomes the extension of the master to the community. So discipleship is not a fenced off personal devotional path, but a practical life that invites others to come and taste Christ in us. So our relationship to God is not a religious relationship to the most powerful God, but it is an authentic transcendence, um, one another in participation and being a present of the body of Christ. So we exude the glory and radiance of Christ to the wider community through our life and witness. And thirdly, the disciple lives out in humility his or her faith commitment in the community by building each other in spite of their failures. So Anglican discipleship cannot and shouldn't be entirely defined by the term witness, but rather discipleship is, is much more about being Christ-like in the context where we are. So the life of discipleship in a broad context within the Anglican Communion is, is, a, is a life one lived in tension and is, also, there is always a tension between our local context and being part of a global communion. So bringing all this to the context of Anglican discipleship, much of what I mentioned early on about Anglican identity, so Anglican missionaries lived out this personal relationship with God um, and reached out to the most marginalized groups across the world. Hence, the current characteristics of global Anglicanism that reflects that foundation of diversity. Anglicanism is more than well-rehearsed and performed tradition, but becoming agents of transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. So Anglican discipleship is about sharing the gospel to the margins, as it has been pointed out early on in these videos, that it is about reaching out, going beyond the center. There is a holistic approach to life and wherever we are located. And Anglican discipleship is about shared experiences of God and how it can all be brought together. And most importantly, it is, it is constantly in dialogue, uh, being heard, being listened to, and most importantly, joining in, in the journey and, uh, of the pilgrimage. It is also a freedom to question our faith, wrestle with hard truths and the challenge, the institutional structures, whether it is institutional racism or institutional um, uh, uh, aspects to gender and also how issues around patriarchy finds itself. So how Anglican discipleship can question those uh, issues and provide constructive holistic responses and most importantly bringing different generations together in worship and understanding the scripture in its context. So bringing all this together Anglican identity built around a sense of community and belonging that fosters equal participation and representation 
across the context. So discipleship is not one living in isolation, but one in fellowship and communion.